Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and welcome to my December wrap up. Today I'm going to be telling you about all the books that I read in the month of December. So I will start off as always with the classics. I read one Victorian book in December which was A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I'm not going to talk about this very much here because I made lots of videos about A Christmas Carol throughout the month of December as I was hosting a read-along about A Christmas Carol so I will link down below the playlist of um, my videos about A Christmas Carol but I really thoroughly enjoyed reading this one. It must be in fact, I have no idea how many times I've read A Christmas Carol. It must be about five or six, if not more, by now. I love it a lot. I think it is a wonderful, beautiful Christmas story with, like, so many fun details and, like, such wonderful writing, like, really Dickens at his best in terms of the, like, centre structure and, like, the way he uses words. I just love it a lot. So this was fantastic and really fun to read it with a group of other people as well. I also read three classics in translation. In December, I read Irisima by Jose Dalencar. This is a 19th century Brazilian classic and I have mixed feelings about it. It is sort of a work of prose poetry. Um, I thought it was a novel and it sort of is a novel, but also the writing is very, very, very heavily poetic and like it does sort of feel in some ways like it's more about the writing than the story. In the back of my edition does say that it is a prose poem um, and I, I don't really know what I would class it as myself but there we go. And it tells a story of the sort of doomed relationship between an indigenous woman and a Portuguese soldier um, and there were some things about it that I found really interesting um, but the writing was very 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 lyrical to the point that it like got in the way of everything else which I, I feel like it was it was a prose poem it was sort of more about the writing but um, I didn't hugely enjoy it myself. Um, so there we go, still an interesting read, I'm glad I read it, but yeah, not a highlight of the month for me. Another classic I had slightly mixed feelings about was this. This is um, Old Man Gorio by Balzac, and um, this is a 19th century French classic, and I feel like I quite enjoyed this, but I feel like it really, really wasn't what I was expecting, which I think was because I had got confused between Balzac and Zola in my head, and I had in my head that Balzac was like, 19th century French realist writer who was like really focused on realism and I think I think possibly I was thinking about Zola because this didn't feel realist at all and it felt like quite weird which I kind of enjoyed but it wasn't what I was expecting because I had the wrong information in my head which is fine but there we go so this is a story um, about various characters who are all connected by the fact they all are lodging at the same boarding house in Paris and our chief main character is a young man who is kind of new to Parisian society um, and wants to kind of get on in society I think he's only sort of in his early 20s and he meets various um, people including one woman who he falls in love with um, but he also kind of befriends a man who lives in his lodging house um, called um, Gorio, and although Gorio is kind of living this very quiet, um, impoverished life in this boarding house, he does actually have some connections to high class society, which our main character kind of finds out about, um, and that links them all together. But then there's also like a complicated, kind of dramatic, sensationalist plot going on in the background with one of the characters who's a bit of a villain, and yeah, I don't know. There were some things about this that I thought were really interesting. I liked the writing, I found it kind of an engaging read, I liked the writing, but like, the ending fell a little bit flat for me. And like, I don't know if I was supposed to like Yuji, the main character, but I really didn't like him, but I think possibly I was supposed to like him more than I did. It was a really interesting read and it was very like historically interesting because I'm quite interested in like 19th century French history, but it wasn't necessarily a favorite for me. Then I also read a Japanese classic this month. I read this, this is Kokoro by Natsumi Soseki and this is a Japanese novel from I think 1914. Um, and this I really enjoyed. This was a really interesting and engaging read. So this book tells the story of a young man and his relationship both with his parents and also with um, a older friend of his, a man who he always refers to as Sensei. Um, and as he gets to know Sensei, he learns a bit more about his life, his relationship with his wife, everything else that's going on in his life. But there's something about Sensei's life in his history that our narrator doesn't know and that he knows he doesn't know. He knows there is some secret about Sensei's past um, and so the first like two thirds of the book is about his relationship with Sensei and then like the last, the latter bit of the book is um, a long letter that Sensei writes to him um, giving him the story of his life. This is a really interesting read. The themes explored here were really fascinating and um, the way it looks at kind of like 
I don't know, family and duty and, um, I don't know, lots of kind of like philosophical ideas, I suppose, in some ways about like um, how good and bad people are. You know, there's just a lot of really interesting themes going on in here, which I really enjoyed. And the characterization is really interesting. The one thing I will say, which slightly let it down for me, is that, um, like I said, this kind of latter section of the book is a letter from Sensei to our narrator. Um, and then the book ends and we never get to see the reaction of our original narrator to Sensei's letter. And like the kind of end of part two is like left on a little bit of a cliffhanger. And then we just go to part three, which is his letter. And then we never know what happens. Um, and so I kind of felt like I wanted a little bit more at the end. Um, but that's mostly a personal thing because I like fairly tied up stories. In general, I think this was a really great read and definitely one I'd recommend. I also read two British 20th century classics this month, one of which was this, This is the Heart of a Matter by Graham Greene, which is from 1948. This book is set in a country within West Africa. The country itself is never named within the novel. And we're following various British people who are kind of living um, in the kind of colonial settlement there. And we're especially focusing on a man called Scobie, who is kind of the head of police of this area. And the book is partly about Scobie's relationship with his wife, um, partly about his relationship with another woman who he meets, um, and partly about kind of the way that this society that he lives in is slightly falling apart and is a bit dysfunctional. Um, so I have kind of mixed feelings about this book. I have really no idea what I thought about this book, to be honest. I mean, aside from anything else, this book is about colonial life in um, Africa during the 1940s, um, and it was written during the 1940s, and it comes with everything you sort of expect um, from a book written by a British person in the 1940s about Africa. It's kind of complicated, because, like, I do feel that this book is critical of British imperialism, but at the same time, like, all the white characters have a lot more characterization and character development than all the characters who aren't white. Is that I also found like the kind of affair plot line, Scobie's relationship with his wife and this other woman not necessarily that compelling, um, and most of the character relationships I wasn't like super invested in. However, I really really loved the writing. I thought the writing was really good, and I feel like there were a few times where Graham Greene would like use a few sentences just to sum up a character, and it would be done really well. Um, so I feel like I would definitely be interested in reading more Graham Greene in the future. Um, but I feel like this was not necessarily the best place to start for me. I also read this. This is The Lonely Londoners by Sam Selvan, which was published in the 1950s. And this is a book which follows various Black Caribbean characters, um, all of whom are living in London um, and who have come over from the Caribbean to London. Um, over the last few years and we're focusing chiefly on a man called Moses who's lived in England for quite a long time um, and also what happens when a new person moves over who he befriends and um, who is known as Galahad and Galahad is kind of getting used to what it's like to live in London um, but we're also following various other characters around them. It's quite short but it's quite episodical like I wouldn't say there's necessarily like a through plot but it's more just about like various little moments and vignettes about all these characters lives. I really enjoyed this, I thought this was a really interesting read, it looks really interestingly at the experience people moving from the Caribbean to England in um, the 1940s and 1950s and I also thought the characterization was wonderful like even though this is quite a short book and it has a lot of characters all the characters really like leapt off the page and like really came to life which I really enjoyed and um, I possibly would have liked this to be longer slash have had more plot going on I don't know um, but I thought it was a really interesting read so yeah definitely one I'd recommend um, and a really historically interesting classic to read. Moving on to some contemporary fiction in December I finally got round to reading Little Nothing by Marissa Silva this is one of the books that has been on my TBR for the longest um, and I finally read it in December and I sort of liked it a lot more than I was expecting to but I have kind of mixed feelings about this this is one of those books that has been on my TBR for quite a long time and I sort of decided that I wasn't necessarily going to like it that much. It's a bit more literary than my usual taste, I suppose. Um, and reading it is quite weird. It's definitely more literary than my usual taste. It's definitely not really my kind of book, but actually there was something about it that just meant that I quite enjoyed it. It's like there was something about the writing that kind of just compelled me to keep reading. I was just like, well, this is just quite interesting, isn't it? Um, so there we go. This is a kind of fairy tale-esque novel set I think before and during the first world war and it's set um in eastern europe I think it's never specified and it's about this girl called Pavla she begins life uh, with dwarfism and then she kind of turns into a sort of half 
girl half wolf thing and then she just becomes a wolf and then later she becomes a woman so she kind of goes through like all these different kind of fairy tale existences i suppose so we're kind of following her and also a man called danilo who is in love with her and we're kind of following their relationship um it's very very angela carter i feel like if you like angela carter you'll enjoy a little nothing um, and i do quite like angela carter but angela carter is one of those authors who like I read and liked as a teenager, but I feel like if I revisited her work now, I would just be a bit amused. Um, and I feel like Little Nothing was quite weird in so many ways, and I couldn't really work out what was going on, what was supposed to be going on, but I kind of just went with it and I quite enjoyed it. If you don't like things that are very strange, I don't think you'll enjoy this, but if you like Angela Carter and like slightly wacky things that play with fairy tales, then I think you might enjoy this one. Then in December I also read Middle England by Jonathan Coe, which I really enjoyed. I really like Jonathan Coe, I've read quite a few of his books before and I always enjoy them. I think this is probably my fifth book by him um, and I always like his work. He writes quite a lot about British society and politics. So this book spans quite a long period of time and um, it's set from 2010 up to um, 2018 I think and it follows various characters um, kind of in the lead up to the Brexit referendum um, and it's quite a lot about kind of politics and kind of divides within society, um, within Britain, or more specifically England really. And we're following various characters, many of whom are part of a family um, that has been featured in some of Jonathan Coe's previous books before, um, but then we're also following some other various characters who are connected to them. Um, and it's kind of just about these families' lives um, and the way that politics, I suppose, divides them in some ways. I really, really enjoyed this. I thought it was a really interesting read. It talks a lot about like various different kind of cultural and political points in British kind of history, I suppose, over the last like 10 years, which I quite enjoyed, especially because it starts in like 2010 and goes up to like 2018. And in 2010, I was like 17. So this book is kind of like looking at lots of the kind of key moments in British like culture and politics over my adult life, which I just found really, really interesting because I like remember a lot of the stuff that Jonathan Coe is talking about, but he's like looking at it through this family's perspective. Um, so I really enjoyed all of that. I thought as always with Jonathan Coe, the characterization was really, really strong. Um, and it was just a really enjoyable read. Jonathan Coe, I feel like is a very reliable author for me. Um, so I thoroughly enjoyed this one. I definitely do need to read more by Jonathan Coe in the future. Then I also read Night Watch by Sarah Waters, um, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I buddy read this with Marissa from Vacantly Bookish, and um, we've been buddy reading all of Sarah Waters' works together over quite a few years now. This is quite a different Sarah Waters for me in that the three previous books of hers that I've read um, were all her three books set in the Victorian period and this is set um, later, this is set in the 1940s. Um, so this book has quite an interesting structure. We start off in 1947, that's part one, then in part two it's 1944 and then in part one it's 1941. So you're following various characters um, and when you meet them in parts um, one in 1947 you don't know how they're connected and then as you kind of go back in time you find out all the links between them how they're connected what connected them in the past and then you kind of work out how they became the people that they are in 1947. I really really love this so much but I also feel like I loved it in a slightly different way to I love other Sarah Waters books. I don't know. Some of the other Sarah Waters books I've read, um, especially Fingersmith and Tipping the Velvet, feel very very plot driven. This is not very plot driven. There are some like really important like key dramatic moments but really this is like a character study of these characters um, although we do see kind of what linked them together during the war and I feel like the things that make this book fantastic are the amazing characters and the depth of these characters and the richness of these characters but also like the way this book looks at the 1940s and like British society in the 1940s was fantastic like all the historical detail was wonderful um, and not just like the detail and what life was like but the sense of like weariness after the second world war and like the way that's looked at um, and how kind of Sarah Waters looks at what life was like in 1947, what it was like in 1944, what it was like in 1941, like it's fantastic and I loved that and it's beautiful and it was so good, I love her writing so much and this is just such a joy to read as her books always are. Sarah Waters is one of those writers where just like every word is just fantastic and I just, I just, you know, really really like relish reading her books because I think they are fantastic but at the same time because the book's not like as plot driven as Fingersmith or Tipping the Velvet I kind of feel like like this book could have gone on longer even though it's quite long I feel like we could have gone back like another five years and looked at them all before then or that we could have like gone forward more um from 1947 onwards I don't know like the ending 
in the 1941 bit, like the last few paragraphs are so satisfying as an ending to a book, but also you know what happens later, so it's sort of unsatisfying and it's kind of like, I don't know, the ending comes first, so it's weird. And I think that's kind of fantastic and I sort of love it, but also it's a bit strange. So, you know, this is great basically, but I also feel like I don't quite have my thoughts together about it yet, but I do think it was wonderful. So there we go, that was very rambling. Let's move on to the next book. Highly recommend The Night Watch by Sarah Walsh though. It was really, really fantastic. Such a joy to read. Then I also read two rom-coms in December, both of which I listened to on audiobook. Um, and the first one was Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Um, this was a rom-com that I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, this was great fun. And this book tells the story of Chloe Brown, um, who is in her early 30s, I think, and has decided that she wants to change her life. Um, so she writes a list of things that she wants to do in order to um, make her life better. Um, and so the, one of the first things that she does is move out of her parents' home. Um, and then she's got various other things on her list that she wants to do. And she ends up kind of um, befriending um, the superintendent of her building, a man called Red, um, who ends up helping her like complete various things on her list. Um, and obviously there's a bit of tension between them which develops as the book goes on. This is a really good fun rom-com. Um, I really enjoyed the relationship between the two main characters and I felt like the device of the list was used really well um, and that the pacing was really good and like how the relationship developed was really nice as well. Um, and I also really love that this book looks at quite a lot of serious themes um, kind of beneath the romantic plotline. Chloe Brown, the main character, um, lives with chronic pain um, and the book talks quite a lot about how she manages her chronic pain um, and how it affects her at various times um, and how her kind of disability affects her relationship with her family and also with Red as she gets to know him. And then Red's last relationship has been quite damaging and the book looks at that quite a lot as well. Um, and those two issues are kind of quite at the forefront of the book but then kind of within the background there's quite a lot about class and race. Chloe is black and she's also from a um, very kind of like upper class, upper middle class background um, and Red is white um, and from a very working class background um, and there's like lots of really interesting things explored to do with that as well. So it's just one of those rom-coms that does what I like best in a rom-com where it's got a really wonderful love story in it but it's also looking at lots of interesting complicated things as well. I just thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it. It has some really absolutely hilarious moments so yeah would highly recommend Get Life Chloe Brown. And then I also listened to Last Night by Vara McFarlane which was incredible and I loved it and it's been probably one of my favourite rom-coms that I have ever read. I'm calling it a rom-com because it is a rom-com. It has a fantastic love story and it is incredibly hilarious, but it's also very much a book about grief. Um, so the book starts off with these um, four friends. They've all been friends since they were a sixth form together. They're now in their kind of early thirties. There's our main character Eve and her best friends, Susan, Justin and Ed. Um, and Eve has kind of been a bit in love with Ed for a very, very, very long time, um, though he has a girlfriend. And you start off the book with these four friends and you think you know exactly what this book is going to be. And then something happens that changes everything. And that's what the book is about. Um, and really it is a book about grief. Um, someone dies very early on in the book um, and the book looks at grief um, and our main character Eve experiencing that grief and how that affects her as a person and how that affects her relationship with everyone around her and how it makes her kind of re really reevaluate her life and I feel like the way this book looks at grief and the depiction of grief in it is absolutely fantastic and just incredibly moving and powerful but also like so well observed and so smart you know it's very very funny because it is it is a wrong kind of environment file and it's a really funny writer and there are some moments where it's like both I don't know simultaneously so funny and so heartbreaking in such a wonderful way um, but I just love it I think it's fantastic and it also has this wonderful love story that I really thoroughly thoroughly enjoy and that I was very very much behind and that just worked like so well um, and through that love story it explored a lot of complicated feelings and um, a lot of complicated things and there was so much character development and I just thought it was fantastic and I loved it yeah just a real like emotional roller coaster so many emotions in last night because it was both simultaneously so funny and so heartwarming and so utterly sad and it's so good and I just I highly highly recommend it I can't recommend it enough and yeah I need to read everything that Warren McFarlane ever wrote. Finally I also read one non-fiction book in December which was Governess by Ruth Brandon and um, this is a history book which um is sort of a 
book about the history of governesses, um, but it isn't exactly a book about the history of governesses. Um, so basically this book looks at various women um, who were around in the 18th and 19th century who were governesses at some point in their life. Um, and the book is kind of split up by person and it basically has a kind of mini biography, I suppose, about each of these individuals. Um, I really enjoyed this in many ways. It was an interesting read. Um, I do like a good history book. This has some really interesting historical stuff in it. But I will say that it is slightly more a book about some interesting women who happen to be governesses rather than about like what it meant to be a governess. Like I feel like I wanted this book to talk more about like the social position of governesses and like everyday life as a governess. And I feel like the first section about the first woman does that because that woman was a governess for sort of all her life but most of the other women talked about in this book um they were a governess for only quite another short time and actually a lot of time is spent on like dwelling on other things in their life which was really interesting but it not wasn't necessarily like what i was expecting i don't know so it was still an interesting read but um possibly not exactly the book i was looking for um but nonetheless interesting as i said and yeah i do always enjoy an interesting history book so there we go those are all the books that i read in december and um, december was a really good reading month i got through lots of books um, and lots of books that won my physical tbr actually which was nice um and i think that's all i have to say about these books do let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them and i'll be back very soon with another bookish video.